Okay, gang, I'm doing number 19. Uh, so the first thing I want to point out is you have to notice the difference when it says solve the equation and when it says uh, solve it on an interval. If you're solving it on an interval, you're just going to write what the distinct specific solutions are. If it's solve the equation, it's for all, it's for the whole number line and it's impossible to list an infinite amount of answers. That's not possible. So what we do is we write an equation that would generate an infinite amount of answers. All right? All right, so I'm going to solve this one here, number 19. Now it's already factored, so we're good with that. Let me see if I can fix this. Okay, we're good with that. So I'm just going to set each piece equal to zero. I'm going to move the one over on this one. Now, um, if the sign equals to zero, if the sign equals to zero or negative one, that's the unit circle. So on the unit circle, the sign would be zero at an angle of zero or an angle of pi on the unit circle. Because sine is the second value. Sine is the second value. So the answers for this one, if I first write them separately, would be z uh, zero, an angle of zero plus two pi n, which would be zero, two pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, 10 pi, 12 pi, 14 pi, right? Every time you come back around here, there's an answer. So that's why you're writing this, where n is an integer. Let n be 0, the answer is 0. Let n be 1, the answer is 2 pi. Let n be 2, the answer is 4 pi. You're writing this so it can generate all the answers. The second answer over here is at pi. And then you have to add 2 pi n because they want all the answers, not just on one interval. Now, because these are equidistant, they're combinable. So, meaning that instead of writing two separate answers, I could just start at 0 and add pi to get to the next answer and add pi to get to the next answer and add pi and so on and so on. So, if I just write, if I just write pi n, then that actually combines all of these. Right? So you have to see this as an equation that generates an infinite amount of answers. The book sometimes uses k. I tend to use n. So if it uses k, it's the same concept. So like, for instance, if n is 0, 0 times pi is 0. If n is 1, pi times 1 is pi. If n is 2, 2 times pi is 2 pi. If n is 3, 3 times pi is 3 pi. If n is 4, 4 times pi is 4 pi. So it's giving you these answers. 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi, off into infinity, okay? So it's impossible to write an infinite amount of answers. That's why you're coming up with this equation that generates all these answers. Because remember, it's a repetitive function. It keeps, it's like a merry-go-round. It keeps coming back to the same output values. So you have an infinite amount of times that the sign will be zero if you're allowed to keep going around the circle. All right, over here, when the sign is equal to negative one, that's a similar concept. That has to be the unit circle because that's the only time the sign equals to negative one. A triangle won't give you that. All right, so for this one, you have to start at zero. You revolve to here. This is an angle of three pi over two. So this would be x is three pi over two plus all its coterminal angles. All right, so this one doesn't have another one halfway across, okay? It just, it's just this one. So it's gonna be three pi and then I have to go all the way around the circle to come back to here, meaning I have to add 2 pi, which would make this 7 pi, right? So, so what's, I'm going to call this my, my x sub b so that you have these two. Uh, so the idea is, is that when n is equal to 0, this is 3 pi over 2 plus 0. 
when n is equal to 1, this is 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi times 1. But you have to get an LCD here. All right? So we start with 3 pi being the first one. The next one will be 7 pi over 2. I mean, this just goes on for forever. Then we can have 3 pi plus 2 times 2 pi, which is adding 4 pi. So now get an LCD. 8 plus 3 is 11. Right, so the first one was 3 pi over 2. The next one was 7 pi over 2. The next time we come around, it's 11 pi over 2. You're not allowed off this circle. You're just going to swing around this an infinite amount of times in a counterclockwise direction and then a clockwise direction because n is an integer, which means it could be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So that means you're also allowed to swing this way clockwise as well as this way. All right, but that's why you're writing an equation because it has an infinite amount of answers. All right, gang, I hope that helped. Bye-bye.